Now, there are other races going on in the world, believe it or not, though they never grab the headlines like the Tour does. But the Giro Rosa began last night. It's the Giro for ladies. And our own Beck DiCello is a previous stage winner in that race. She's coming tonight. Hi there, Beck. Hello. Hello. Lovely to see you welcome, all. Welcome, welcome. Well, we go way back to when you were just a wide-eyed, sweet young thing who joined the Surf Lifesaving Club and sent all the teenage clubby boys into a frenzy. Oh. Who would ever know that you'd go on to become such a great road cyclist? Congratulations. <laughs> oh, from the ocean to the, to yeah. the road, isn't it really? <laughs> what a change. And all this despite being told that your back was shot at one point, you'd never compete in anything. Mm. Look, I was really, uh, really fortunate. I've got an extra bone and an extra disc in my back and, yeah, told I was never to be able to do sport again. Had about three and a half years off and I was just really determined and uh, wanted to travel the world and, and, and do my sport and ended up in cycling and... Yeah, there I was. Congratulations. You were you born with that extra bone and the extra disc? Oh. <laughs> she I bought it on eBay, Nick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you know, it's actually not uh, uncommon to have an extra bone and possibly even an, an extra disc. So uh, the worst thing is is that it's actually fused itself onto my, uh, to my pelvis, which makes it worse. So that means fused means that it's actually joined itself onto my pelvis. So, yeah. You've anyway. only got one pelvis, though, haven't you? <laughs> I have. Yeah. I have. I'm not any more unique okay. than that. Yeah. <laughs> so when you started word, racing, you, you were racing in Holland for a, a Dutch team, obviously. Um, yes. And when did you st start racing kind of competitively and feel you were competitive as a stage winner? Oh, look, it's, uh, as you, as we know, cycling's hard and, and tough. So it, it took me a while, but I, I, I went straight into it, really. I started racing and within a year I decided, right, this is what I want to do. I'm actually going to uh, go overseas. I gained my own sponsors and my own contracts and basically just took myself over to Holland and to... America in the first year and and basically just threw myself into it and um, and then yeah and basically each year I gradually got better and better and I think it was probably in the third or fourth time I was over there that I really felt like okay I can I'm actually hitting my straps and and I'm I feel like I'm actually mixing it because as you would know, and, and both of you uh, racing in Europe, it's so different from racing in, in Australia. The, the roads are so much more narrower. The, mm. the, uh, you've got so much more road furniture to contend oh, it's with. Completely it's different. unbelievable. And, and you're in the most dangerous place in the world to race a bike, Holland. <laughs> exactly. <It's deadly. laughs> and the women are all and six foot tall and yeah. super powerful, and they've grown up riding a bike. Oh, so, you it, know, their oh, skill level is fantastic. It is. And I remember the first race that I did, I was at the start line. I was next to a girl, and she would have been at least four or five years younger than me and I said oh you know how long have you been riding for and she said oh yeah 10 years and I went oh good <laughs> yeah, I'm going really well and within like the first kilometre I was like you know out the back and <laughs> <laughs> I do remember us all being quite surprised you, you vanished from the surf club and then le next thing we heard a few years later oh, Beck's racing in Europe what cycling it's incredible <laughs> and we never knew you harboured this secret uh, dream to be a cyclist well, I suppose uh, you, you just have that inner determination, don't you, and motivation, I think, and, and most, uh, a lot of sports people do, and I grew up uh, a sports fanatic, really, and loved all my sports, and, and really just wanted to be able to, um, yeah, be be one of the best if I could, mm -hmm. and uh, and also to be able to travel the world, because it's not actually just about the, the racing as well, it's it's also about the, the culture, uh, I taught myself to speak Flemish and Italian as wow. well, because you needed to, yeah. Uh, there's race radios and you've got all the team managers in the in the in your ear yelling at you and they're saying all these weird kind of um, <laughs> words. You think, what the hell have I got to do when the, your uh, your riders don't help you? And so. it's nice to be able to walk into a shop and order something to eat. <laughs> exactly, yeah, and know where the toilet is. Mm. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> Correct. So in the meantime, you also got a bachelor of science and and now you're working as a coach and advisor and in fact in organising races. That must be fantastic. It is. It's wonderful. I. I really feel like if uh if we can actually put back into the sport as well, I really want to be able to help others and especially juniors coming through to provide them with not only the skills from a cycling point of view, but also life skills as well to be able to deal with the trials and tribulations that happen, whether you're on the bike or um, dealing with whether it's bullying or, or something like that at school, that I can help them guide them into different areas. And, and you, you women really annoy me. <laughs> like, at least not you only, find it not only are you a professional bike rider, 
daughters, but you're also smart and educated. How's that work? Well, wait, for this it gets even better. You've been working to bring up the uh, the tour of Adelaide, right? For the uh, I did, yes. Recently, the first uh, the first tour in uh, Adelaide, it was a, a National Road Series tour, so it was really exciting to actually be there. And it even had a little bit of uh, Belgium in it with uh, dirt roads. Yeah, I heard oh, about that. It really? was fantastic. It was yeah, it was a Stewie O'Grady uh, road stage. Oh, he no, obviously no was doubt, partly yeah. the <laughs> design of it. Not um, hard enough to <laughs> make them do dirt. Oh, and, but everybody loved it. All the riders, loved, both the, the guys and the girls obviously did the, the course and they, they really loved it. So it was a great tour to be involved with, especially in Adelaide too, it was also one of the you know cycling cities as well, such as, as much as Melbourne is too. So yeah, it's been really fun. Now August next month, big things for you and the team you've been uh, keeping an eye on as well. Bring some girls out. Yes, in uh, it, it is. I'm actually managing the. It, there's a new development team, Cycling Victoria Women's Development Team. So it's really exciting. We've picked six riders that have shown some promise and uh, and also that have just new into the the sport as well so excited about that and and I think it's just fantastic for for women uh, as well there's so much more um, support for females mm. nowadays although one thing I would like to say is that I was checking out the um, the prize money Tour de France 450,000 euro mm -hmm. for first place and uh, about 450 uh, 450 dollars oh. or 450 euros for the women in the Giro oh, <laughs> well last year it was 1100 euro and I thought we okay, got one well, a maybe million. that was yeah so <laughs> <laughs> we'll discuss that later. So there's there's some inequality out there. Don't, don't bang them up. <laughs> we want to invite you back, but don't bang them up too much. Thanks for that. Lovely to see you. Good luck with all your, uh, your sport much. commitments and media as well.